I'm Harrison Carroll from CM Industrial. I'm a specialist recruiter working in the plastic space. I'm here today at Polymateria to meet the CEO, Neil Dunn, so he can tell us a little bit more about the business. So Polymateria was founded in 2015 by two people, Lee Davy Martin and Jonathan Seif, who were particularly incensed by the plastic pollution problem. They've been approached as investors by a number of different legacy technologies. They didn't see anything on the landscape back in 2014, 2015 that they thought was technically credible, nor indeed uh, commercially scalable. So they set the challenge to come up with answers to a lot of those limitations to polymer scientists, biologists and chemists, and spent four to five years working in the Imperial Innovations ecosystem here to really develop a new technology that we've been commercializing over the course of the last year. Plastic has been getting an increasing amount of exposure. As we become ever more conscious of the environmental emergency single-use plastics are causing, I asked Neil why this issue has captured the attention of so many, including Polymateria's founders. So the global plastic pollution problem is in many ways emblematic of our overall um, struggles with the environment. While, whilst it might be difficult to see uh, carbon emissions and methane and, and also water and, and, and food issues, plastic pollution has really grabbed people's imagination like no other environmental issue. The reason for that is it, it's so epidemic. So 32% of all plastic that's made in any given year winds up as what we call fugitive, so leaking into the, into the natural environment. I wanted to know about the specific types of plastic that were causing problems, and if that was where polymateria were setting their sights. Firstly, food contact approved packaging is where the biggest issues are, and it's also where the biggest markets are. So polyurethanes and um, and also PET are the most littered types of plastic and they, that's where our commercial focus uh, is at the moment but as we're learning lessons there the fashion industry is, is an area that we think we could also bring a lot of those lessons that we've learned in food contact approved packaging into the fashion industry as well. With the vast quantities of food packaging out there this is a global problem. I asked Neil where polymateria are now where they're going to be soon and where they want to be in the future. Um, we have launched the technology first in North America, secondly into East Africa. We are about to launch in Spain and Portugal over the next couple of weeks and in the UK as well. So these are the key markets that you will be seeing our technology in uh, over the next uh, couple of months. And then over the medium term, we have started to hire and, and build capability into Southeast Asia and also into Latin America as well. So we will be going from literally a standing start this time last year into kind of delivering an incredibly uh, exciting commercial growth plan um, over the next year or two. The technology is already on the market in various locations, but how does it actually work? I was lucky enough to get a walkthrough of exactly what Polymaterials technology does and how their proprietary biotransformation process works. The whole laboratory next door is all about that kind of first phase, so within supply chain, within in-use phase, and also end of life, to give recycling every chance to happen, we can program that. So you get from you know, a polypropylene pot like this here to almost like a powder right, right. within literally a couple of weeks. So once it starts, then it's like that after a couple of weeks? Really, really quick time wow, frame, okay. really quick time frame. Yeah. And it's also for, for rigids. So for things like this, you know, this bottle here, yeah. where you kind of see it just kind of crumble to the yeah. point where it's now no longer polymeric. Yeah. So it's down to what we'd kind of call degraded oligomeric type material. And that is ultimately then with the prebiotic effect, what the bugs, the microbes, the fungi engage with, yeah. attack and colonize, and that then, as, as a carbon, will become carbon dioxide, yeah. water, and biomass. Right. And people ask what the biomass is, it's, it's basically more bugs. <laughs> right, okay, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. But on the shelf, it's exactly the same as a traditional product. You know, what you might see is, uh, let's say with these polypropylene cups here, is that it has a recycle by date. So these cups have been set to just act like a cup, behave like a cup, up until June 2021. Right. So nothing will, will happen them yeah. but then once that date is up within that period of time yeah. a couple of weeks it will start to crumble break right. fall apart yeah. loses its structural integrity but also nature will recognize it 
This is a, a low density polyethylene sheet without our technology in it. Um, and as you can see, uh, looks like any other LD sheet. When we age it, which is exactly what happens in nature, you get microplastic. Yeah. Um, it's uh, you know, gonna be like that. It's gonna persist over time. It's not gonna go away. And when you melt it down, you can turn it back into something that has form, something that has substance, and we've made a little lid here. When you put it under live dead imagery, you see that the uh, microbes and the fungi, bacteria, nature's foot soldiers are ultimately dying, and that's what the red uh, blotches demonstrates. Whereas when you've got the prebiotic effect in here, not only is this chemically transformed where it'll keep breaking and breaking, yeah. won't persist over time, unlike a microplastic, this now is recognizable to nature, as you can see by these kind of green splotches starting to appear all over the material because yeah. they're finding food, because they can recognize that they're able to thrive, colonize and do their thing. You also, when you try to put it back together, yeah. <laughs> uh, you get more like a grease like wax material like this here right. uh, because of the incredibly low molecular weight yeah. um, that we're, we're able to kind of get uh, into the, into the uh, product. Whereas this, yeah. will always be a microplastic. No matter what you do, yeah. you can make it back into something like this, which is, which is what we've done. Yeah, yeah. The scale of this problem is enormous, and that means that the scale of the solution has to match it. Even though polymaterials technology is incredibly effective, there are still challenges that need to be overcome. Consumers since the 1970s have been very familiar with use-by dates. You know that if the produce is going to go off next Wednesday, well then you don't eat it on Thursday or Friday because you'll probably get sick. However, communicating biodegradability or compostability either creates confusion on the one hand around what bin does it go into, or um, if, if uh, they are thinking that this is like an apple or, or a banana or anything else that's biodegradable, it can uh, increase littering rates. So in order to get over that, one of the things that we have developed with some of the leading brands in the world is this concept of packaging now having a recycle by date. So that's the date by which the packaging would lose its utility and start the process of the return to nature. That allows you to communicate that prime reaction to the consumer and incentivize them to do so. Polymateria have played host to a range of illustrious visitors, including his Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. But what's the feedback been like when people have seen the products? Initially people say unequivocally too good to be true. But once they actually come and visit the laboratories and also see the testing proof packs and the data that we're able to provide, and particularly I think given the, uh, the fact that it's third party data, so we use ISO accredited recognized laboratories that people can take a lot of confidence from and that we do not let anything out into the market unless we've got that third party data on the specific application, not the resin, but the specific application itself, they then realize that this technology is, is serious and incredibly more um, credible than anything that has, has gone before. And ultimately then it's a case of moving at pace. So how can you then get out of just thinking about the technology and where it can be tested and where it can be deployed into making sure that you deal with the commercial side of things um, progressively and also the marketing, not just the B2B marketing, but ultimately the B2C marketing as well. And over the last year, we've been taking a very disruptive approach to doing all of those things as well. That's Polymateria. Thanks to Neil and the rest of the team for showing us what they do and how they do it. Their journey to becoming the new normal in plastic production is a fascinating one that I'm sure the whole industry will be watching.